स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया students uh, this video we are going to look at a problem and uh, uh, which is a burgers equation essentially and th this will actually give you an idea of how to work with you know the rankin huguenot condition and weak solutions so let's say ut plus uux equals to 0 right and the u uh, at the point x0 right so basically on the um, x axis that's it it is phi of x clear of course, here t is greater than or equal to 0, x is in r, okay, that is given to us. And here phi, okay, so this is the general problem, right, where now I am just putting the conditions on phi. Now, this condition phi, this is, this condition phi may, may not be continuous here, okay. So, for, for, for this kind of sort of problems, generally, what will happen is we will consider that phi is not continuous so x is less than 0 and uh, x is greater than 0 so basically when x is negative you have 1 and when x is uh, positive you have 0 so that's your initial condition phi right now i want to solve this problem now uh, i don't want to uh, spend much time on it but uh, you guys already know right i mean uh, if you just uh, you know uh, so parameterize okay uh, the data curve so parameterizing the data curve metrize the data curve data curve is given by let's say c curve c with r okay and that will give you give you r zero phi of r so this belongs to the graph of s right graph of uh, u sorry graph of u right which you can write it as s that that's these are the notations we have used earlier if you remember okay and um, you know the, the integral curve integral curves are basically the solution right? integral curve uh, that uh, so if it is parameterized so if if one parameterizes if one parameterize the integral curve integral curve with s huh? by s so let's say something huh? g of s let's say huh? So then, I mean, so basically for each r you have to do it, then, uh, so basically any point will be x of rs, y of rs, z of rs, z of rs is basically is any point on this, right, any point. So I, the writing is not correct, huh? you do realize, so basically integral curve is given by this. Here, any point on the integral curve is given like this for any fix. So, basically, you fix the R, okay, that's a data curve uh, C, it is parameterized by R. So, once you fix the R, let's say this is the R, now you are looking for a curve which moves from here, right, and uh, moves along such that, you know, the derivatives is given by such that uh, the characteristics. So, basically, uh, let me write it like this, huh? I am not, so basically, you, you know all this, huh? I am not writing all this, that is why. So, the characteristic for a fixed R, fixed R positive, the characteristic equations, equations are given by, are given by, so is this clear, you see, you fix R, right, you fix R on this data curve, initial curve, so in our case, the initial curve is R x0, so basically, in our case, this is the initial curve, right, so they, let's say, fix R, R not 0, let's say. 1, 0, whatever you want to call it. Huh? And after that, you are looking for a curve which starts from here. Let's, let's call that curve as S, let's say. Or here, we call it as G, right? So, let's call it as G. So, G, uh, so essentially what happens is for a fixed R0, G of R0 and it, this curve depends on S, right? Okay, so you are parameterizing this. So, for a fixed star, characteristic equations are given by uh, X prime RS that is uh, if you remember x prime rs is u right so u is uh, we will define u to be z right u is the height right so that is z and uh, y uh, no t prime uh, not y so we can write it as t prime so t prime rs that is given by uh, 
uh, 1 and z prime r s is given by uh, 0 right so basically uh, the uh, it is uh, you know constant uh, um, with respect to s right so and uh, of course you know the initial conditions how do you write it x at the point r0 is r t at the point r0 is 0 z at the point r0 is phi of r clear so those are the characteristics so all of these things you guys already know and i'm quite sure quite familiar with right so now i'm i'm not uh, wasting my time writing all that so essentially from here you do realize that uh, what are the characteristic curves huh? so we also discussed it earlier also so that is why i'm just skipping this part huh? i i hope that is fine so the projected characteristic first thing first what are the projected characteristics you remember projected characteristics are characteristic curves uh, which lies on the uh, z equals to 0 plane right projected characteristics characteristic curves are given by are given by x equals to phi of r times t plus r clear okay of course now those are that, that are the projected characteristics right and the solution and the solution is given by solution by uh, if you want to write it down it will be uh, u equals to so there are some work needs to be done but uh, essentially i hope you guys can do it huh? u at the point x c is given by phi of x minus u times t right so implicit uh, uh, it's not an explicit formula it's given by this implicit formula if you remember okay we did this thing so anyways but i mean uh, if you don't also remember you can just solve this problem and you can get this uh, thing okay so let's call this as one okay right now or maybe two huh? let's call this as one okay so characteristic equation solving characteristic equation you get uh, the projected characteristics given by this and the solution is given by this now the important thing is this is where we are going to change our approach huh? now you see we are given what is phi of r phi of r is given by one okay so mm, phi of r is you see uh, for r negative it is one you see phi of r if you character if you parameterize it with r phi of r is one for r negative 0 for r positive right so if that is the case then what are the characteristic projected characteristic lines okay so that those will give you lines right so first thing first for r negative then r negative huh, phi of r is basically 0 oh no 1 sorry phi of r is 1 right phi of r is 1 and uh, therefore therefore the projected characteristics what are the projected characteristics okay uh, are given by x equals to phi of r is 1 so t plus r where is r varying r is negative clear yes those are the projected characteristics now for r greater than 0 phi of r is given by 0 right that is what yes 0 so that uh, what are the projected characteristics projected characteristics it is you see if you put phi of r to be 0 it is x equals to r okay for which r r positive well, please be uh, be careful about it okay now let us draw some pictures and see what are the projected characteristics huh? so let's draw some pictures here okay so you see uh, first thing first uh, i have uh, for r negative x equals to t plus r so r equals to 0 is x equals to t essentially huh? and i can't take r equals to 0 exactly but i mean you do realize it's like uh, up till 0 huh? so i i mean i am not uh, let me just do it like this huh? i hope this is fine so those are the projected characteristics huh? Uh, and for r positive x equals to r so let's say r equals to 1 so x equals to 1 r equals to uh, 0 0.001 so x equals to 0 0.001 so essentially those will look like this no okay some straight lines 
so my drawing is not perfect <laughs> okay so please forgive, forgive that but uh, i mean you get the gist of it okay so essentially it will go on doing this yeah now you you see that what is happening is we have a problem right what sort of problem do we have we have a problem like so let's say this is x this is t this is x this is t now you see um, if you if you look at the third uh, this thing this this uh, characteristic equation what does it say it says that the z is constant yeah z is constant with respect to s right z is constant with respect to s so whatever it does at, at the initial s equals to zero uh, so for any s the same value so you, you know the data is carried you, you remember yeah so z is constant see basically z prime is with respect to s right with respect to s is zero so z is constant with respect to s z at the point s equals to zero is phi of r so basically z is phi of r once you fix a r once you fix a r z is phi constant okay so along that characteristic z is constant yeah so if z is constant what is z so basically z of r s is essentially u of x r s y of rs right okay so essentially that's your z so z is the height huh? that will give you the graph huh? so z is constant along the characteristic curves huh? so if z is constant so whatever the value z takes here the value will be retained here and retained here okay again same thing here so basically you see here uh, let's say what is the value of uh, z let's say phi of r so essentially um, is 1 for r negative so z is 1 here huh? so at this point it is 1 at this point it is 1 again if you go along these characteristics along these characteristics it is going to be uh, if you see it is going to be uh, phi of r is 0 so basically it is going to be 0 okay so along these characteristics along these characteristics if you are going it is 1 along this characteristic you are going it is 0 so you do realize you, uh, that if characteristics intersect is there we are in a problem because along two different paths you are getting two different uh, values right so the solutions which you are going to get are not continuous is this clear okay i hope this is clear huh? if it is not clear draw some characteristics and see what is happening see along this characteristic so what is the initial condition here so let's say what is the value so for this r not let's say fix r not okay so uh, at this point what is the value of u what is the value of u at the point r not at this point let's say um, uh, so not u so basically u only but uh, i mean let's call it z huh? so as to avoid any confusion z at the point r not 0 that is going to be phi of r not right okay you see z at the point r not 0 is phi of r not huh? uh, from this third equation okay so if that is the case for r not positive this is going to be 0 for r not pos uh, positive clear okay so you see uh, and and this is z at the point r not s yes or no okay because z is constant along uh, the characteristic so s equals to uh, for a given any s huh, and s equals to 0 they are going to be same because this is constant along s right so z of r not s so any z here let's say r not s that u uh, z is going to be 0 again if you so this along this path right this is one of the characteristics so along this path z is going to be 0 again along this path if you are coming okay then what you are going to get you are going to get that z r not zero okay so along this negative axis if you are coming so it will intersect somewhere right okay this z of r not s which is equals to phi of r not which is equals to one if r not is negative right that will happen and then if you are going to so basically along this r not negative path if you are taking then that will give you one so that's a contradiction yeah, because you see you are going to get a function so if there is such a solution that means that the solution is taking two different values at the same point right okay so what are the values 0 and 1 so basically it's a multivalued function those are not uh, you know allowed right so that's a contradiction so therefore we don't have we don't have any continuous solution continuous solution of the problem 
I hope this is fine. Huh? This is very simple. Huh? No problem. I mean, you just uh, write down the projected characteristics and work with it. Okay. Now, what we will do is this. So, we look for, therefore, we look for weak solution. So, I hope you understand why we are looking for weak solution. We look for weak solution. Weak solution. Huh? So, weak solutions, as I told you, they may not be a continuous function. Huh? They cannot be, they may be a discontinuous function also. Okay. Now, how do you find a weak solution? So, you look for the curve. So, we find, find the curve x equals to xi of t clear okay such that you see if i approach u minus so along this path u is 1 along this path u is 0 right so basically let's just uh, think of it like this that uh, um, u minus which is like the i mean you know uh, so on the left of the curve the value of u on the left of the curve that is given by let's say 1 okay so from this side from this side 1 huh? and in this side let's say u is 0 somewhere huh? I don't know what the curve is so essentially something like this huh? let's say some curve is something like this huh? it may not be here it can be here also huh? I don't know it can be here also huh? somewhere huh? I'm just drawing some pictures here so x equals to xi t let's say huh? so let's say that's your x that's your t so x equals to xi t this is the curve so what I'm saying is this let's say this part from the left u is u minus let's say that's your 1 and u plus is 0 okay how am i getting all this because you see uh, for the initial condition dictates that the initial condition says that uh, along these points u is going to be 0 along these points u is going to be 1 okay the projected characteristics and the initial uh, conditions will give something like this no okay so initial condition actually gives you information on how to you know uh, deal with this thing so basically i'm taking u minus to be 1 and u plus to be 0 okay now ranking huguenot condition i will write it like this huh? condition rh condition okay because you know i don't want to write it all the time ranking huguenot condition what does that give it gives the jump of f of u you remember that is equals to the speed of the curve sigma times the jump of u okay now what is jump of f of u it is f of u plus minus f of u minus by u plus minus u minus equals to sigma u uh, the uh, okay so th this jump of u i just wrote it like u plus minus u minus okay so that will f in our cases if you remember what is f in our case f is our case is u square by 2 okay see uh, generally what happens is the the original problem will look like this no in conservation law f of u times x is 0 right u at the point x 0 is phi of x so in our case f is f is uh, x square by 2 huh? or u square by 2 whatever you want to call it huh? u square by 2 so if it is u square by 2 um, i mean if you just put all of this together i am not doing this thing huh? so you realize that sigma is going to be half because it will be ultimately u plus plus u minus by 2 right and u plus is 1 or u minus is 0 so i mean it's going to be half okay so uh, the slope so basically the speed of the curve is going to be half okay now what is one requirement on the curve so we want our curve so also also we want our curve in this case huh, to pass through the origin okay now can you guess why can you guess why we want it because you see there is an initial condition which differentiates the value of u right so initial condition says that u is uh, you know one in negative axis and zero in the positive axis so basically that uh, differentiates uh, u right so basically any curve if i want to have a curve so basically if i want uh, i want to have a curve like that okay like this and um, i want to say u minus is one in some place u plus is zero is another place so basically that curve has to pass through origin because of the initial conditions i hope this is clear initial condition dictates you see that curve cannot be here because you see uh, i mean i have uh, the initial condition says that at this point u has to be 
you has to be so if there is a gap here uh, you has to be zero initial condition give, um, dictates that right so uh, that uh, i mean uh, i don't want to go into one zero and all huh? so that is why that curve must pass through zero zero so as to you know um, accommodate the initial condition i hope this is clear okay so it has to pass through origin okay now once it passes through origin what happens is um, so basically you can write it what's the curve so x equals to xi xi t right that's the curve so curve is given by x equals to xi t huh? uh, now x equals to xi t is the required curve okay required curve and uh, you see uh, sigma is what if you remember it is the speed right so that is i prime t and that is given to be half huh? so if you solve this thing it will give you sigma of t is t by 2 right plus some constant okay but that constant is going to be 0 y because the curve passes through 0 0 so the you don't have any constant clear okay now you see if i is t, t by 2 that will imply x equals to t by 2 that's the curve which you are looking for okay so uh, let me draw some pictures here uh, i hope um, ah, okay i'm very afraid of drawing uh, it's not a strong suit for me so let's uh, i hope this is fine huh? okay uh, this is uh, so let's say that that's your t uh, sorry uh, that's your t and this is your x okay and this is x equals to t by 2 that's the curve okay so in the left of this this is u plus right sorry in the right of this u plus is 0 on the left of this so in the whole thing huh, this this whole region whole upper the upper half region but up till here up till here the whole region u is 0 okay sorry uh, u is 1 u minus is 1 huh? not 0 u minus is 1 and here u plus is 0 uh, here u plus is 0 in this part okay okay so therefore what is the solution therefore the our weak solution our weak solution solution is given by is given by u of x t is 1 0 for x less than t by 2 and for x greater than t by 2 clear so u equals to 1 in this part u equals to 0 on the other part huh? why is this a weak solution first thing first i mean we have seen that for a solution to be weak first thing it has to be l infinity so it has to be bounded function right 1 0 that function is of course bounded okay it has to be classical on the uh, both sides of the curve so let's say on the left of the curve u minus is 1 it's a constant function so it's a classical function a solution huh? on the right u plus is 0 so again that's a classical solution so basically on the each side of the curve it's a classical solution okay so that is there and uh, of course it is in infinity it satisfies the rank in Huguenot condition so uh, uh, remark uh, it is classical classical solution on each side of the curve on each side of the curve right of course that is true and uh, the solution is bounded is bounded okay and it satisfies satisfies Rankine Huguenot condition. Of course, it satisfies because uh, I mean we got the thing from Rankine Huguenot condition, right? So, of course, this is a weak solution and uh, it is given like uh, this, okay? Now, we are exploring a little more on this uh, Burgess equation, okay? So, essentially, let's take another example, huh? let's do another example and see that uh, I mean how to deal with this sort of problems. Huh? Ut plus uux equals to 0 u at the point x0 is given by p of x clear <clears throat> let's say let's call this i don't know maybe uh, 3 huh? um, so 
that is there and what is the initial condition so the initial condition is uh, this you see phi of x yes that i will write it like one clear for x positive and zero for x negative okay so that's a very simple initial condition so you see this initial condition is exactly the opposite of whatever we have done, just done right now don't be you know fooled by just looking at the initial condition and thinking yeah nothing will change it's just the change in direction no everything changes huh? and we will look at it now see first of all i am not solving this thing we just did this yeah the problem i'm not solving it i will just uh, write down what are the characteristics huh? so the projected characteristics projected characteristics characteristic curves curves okay are given by are given by x equals to phi of r times t plus r right that is given by this therefore if r is negative clear r negative so uh, what is the you see this is the the characteristic curve is given by c of r which is r zero phi of r right so if r is negative the phi of r is zero so x is equals to r though that is the projected characteristics clear and if r is positive okay greater than 0 then f e of r is 1 so x equals to uh, in that case uh, t plus r clear okay now let's draw the projected characteristics and see what happens so now you will see that uh, everything changes actually okay uh, so again i have to draw those things uh, let me see if i can do that that's your x axis okay and this is our t axis okay so x and t and uh, now i want to draw uh, the projected characteristics right so for r negative x is r so let's say sorry uh, i mean okay so for r negative okay r negative r r is basically the x axis right okay and uh, this is t so uh, the, for r negative the projected character say x equals to r so essentially those are straight lines huh? uh, those are straight lines let's draw those straight lines okay those are the projected characteristics okay and uh, for r negative so this is for r negative and r positive x equals to uh, t plus r so essentially um, it will be the slope is one slope is one i hope this is slope is one huh? uh, okay uh, this is fine huh? i think this is clear i mean this is the best drawing i can do okay of course uh, this is not i mean uh, t starts from zero huh? so this these parts are not there huh? but i don't want to um, you see this, there will be a problem with the software i have to remove the whole line huh? so those lines are not there this part is not there huh? from here to here these parts are not there huh? please don't draw, draw that it starts from here it starts from here okay and then moves on it goes on okay those are the projected characteristics clear and here also the, it moves on it starts from here it starts from here and it moves on clear okay so please don't draw this part clear now uh, see uh, what is happening is this uh, so we have this projected characteristic uh, for r negative we have the uh, in this region okay and for r, r positive we have this region now question is this what happens in this region okay do you think there is one projected characteristic which passes through this region of course not okay there is none so if it is not the case then what is the value of u in those regions in this region i don't know what is the value of u so the problem is this okay since let's call this region as r let's say okay since in r we don't have any projected characteristics we don't have any projected characteristics projected characteristic curves hence we don't have any information on the solution have any information mention on the solution okay so let me tell you again what is happening here see projected characteristic what does it do see in this case in our case since this part is zero okay it means that z is constant along the characteristics yes 
if z is constant along the characteristic c it means that um, whatever the value it takes in the initial uh, point if it goes along the characteristic the same values remains right u has the same value along the projected characteristic now if that is the case if that is the case then what is happening is this see so basically what uh, initial conditions are doing is basically they are messengers right they carry the information forward clear but here since there are no initial um, i mean projected characteristic curve so there is no i mean i don't know how the projected characteristic curves are moving on in which direction or what are they doing because there is none right so i can't uh, have any information on the solution huh? now the question is this question is what how to deal with r with r okay because you do realize that the r is a weak part of the domain right and if you can't find a, a solution uh, which is in r i mean then the solution is not a very good solution of course right so let's see if we can do something about it so first thing first what we are going to do is this so let's say that we draw something like this huh? let us again draw some this thing okay and uh, x equals to t and uh, here okay uh, i hope this is fine okay so those are there now you see in this part in this part of the domain u is given by uh, if you if you want to write it u is given by uh, 1 right okay because you see uh, along these characteristics the value is constant and here uh, the value of u is 1 the initial condition is 1 so at any point here let's say at this point u the value of u is 1 at this point the value is also basically along the characteristic in this part of the domain it is 1 and u is 0 on this part of the domain clear so essentially i want to find what happens in this part let's say there is some curve huh? i don't know how but uh, there, let's assume that there is some curve so x equals to xi of t okay let x equals to xi of t be a curve okay uh, such that so basically you see it i mean you know on either side of the curve either side of the curve you know that drill right either side of the curve so you are basically looking at a, a classical solution the solution is classical is classical so basically uh, here if i'm taking u minus then that is going to be zero quite clear and what is u plus that is going to be one okay so basically what i'm saying is let's say there is some curve such that you can extend this thing to one u is one here okay up till here and u is zero here okay u is zero here okay i don't know whether such a curve exists or not or, or what the curve is okay here i'm just saying that let's just hope there is a curve so if there is a curve what is the speed of the curve so the speed of the curve sigma is xi prime of t which is f of u plus minus f of u minus by u plus by u minus right if you want to write it down that is u plus plus u minus by 2 okay so which is half so sigma is half okay so and the curve must pass through 0 0 why it must pass through 0, 0 same idea right that the initial condition here actually divides u is 0 on the left u is 1 on the right so basically it has to pass through 0 0 so the curve should be x equals to t by 2 okay so x equals to t by 2 so one solution one possible solution why i am writing this thing that also we need to explore solution is given by is given by u1 of xt is 0 0 for x less than t by 2 okay and it is 1 for x greater than t by 2 clear okay so and of course if you just write it die like this so basically t by 2 is some curve here right uh, some curve here okay so this curve is essentially it looks like that huh this curve looks like that okay and up till here u is 0 and so basically we are extending the function on both sides okay and um, uh, this is of course a weak solution that is quite clear right huh? this is a weak solution okay 
now the question is this i wrote one possible solution so does that mean that there are other solutions you understand what i'm trying to say so basically i am extending this curve to something like this no okay i am extending this curve to something like this now the question is another possibility is this see uh, the other possibility u2 of xt now how do we get it we get it by a in, in, intuition here okay zero if x is negative okay one if x is greater than equal see here now what i am doing is this i am taking another solution okay so uh, let's just draw that solution first thing okay and uh, x equals to t okay this is uh, x equals to t and uh, let's just first of all draw the okay these things are there huh? these are the projected characteristics of curve now i am drawing this part i i will join it like this see it basically i have to find a solution such that they are practical on either side of the curve and you know those things so that is if I, there is a curve okay now i am assuming that i will construct a solution from our own huh? i don't know I, I mean we are not giving you any information on how we are doing it but let's just draw some i mean let's just say something like this huh? something like this so you understand what is happening here sorry the, the, this thing has to be removed huh? okay so so basically uh, something like this huh? we are just joining it like this like a cone kind of thing is happening okay something like this, this uh, the, the, that r region i am just um, i mean you know uh, filling it up like that okay so basically i am filling the region uh, with some solution okay and the solution is given by x is greater than or equal to t it is one of course that is okay that is given by the initial condition you don't have to you don't you can't do anything here but you can do something here so i am writing x by t for um, x less than equal t greater than equal 0 okay so basically you see here u is 0 here u is 1 and here u is x by why because you see once you take x equals to 0 what is happening here this will converge to 0 and if you take x equals to t near x equals to t it becomes 1 so basically it's a continuous function yeah so basically you are continuously extending the whole thing so initially the first solution is not continuous here this is a continuous function okay so um, uh, so this is another uh, way of doing it okay and uh, this type of solution okay so this type of solution let me put it uh, in a small note maybe solutions like this this what do i mean by like this so which fills the which fills the void region okay fills the void region okay Please remember, I am not using any ranking ingenite conditions of curves. I am just filling that uh, thing with some solution which I think uh, uh, is appropriate. Huh? Now, we do have to check that whether that is a solution or not. Do you realize? I mean, I can't just write uh, any function and think of that is a, as a solution. Huh? Can't do that. So, first of all, you have to verify that uh, u2 equals to x by t on that region satisfies the solution. But it satisfies the solution. I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, if you want, you guys can check it. Okay. So, which fills the void region. Mm, so, that solution in the wedge. Okay. Uh, void region. So, basically, what, what is the void region? So, basically, that region is given by 0 xt. Is called, very important, uh, is called a rare faction wave rare faction wave clear okay and uh, so um, you have two different solutions now right so you see you do realize that uh, i mean there are infinitely many solutions you can actually you know uh, i mean it depends right there is no guarantee that how many solutions are there you can just construct solutions huh? as long as you can i mean it depends on you whether you can construct or not but there are solutions available that's what i'm saying how do i get u2 again u2 is just a i mean by intuition for right now you can just think of u2 as just for from intuition now you see how many solutions do i get 
you are which i get from that uh, line uh, the the ranking you can write condition and the second solution which i am getting is y intuition let's just say that huh? so i have two solutions here now the question is this i want 12 post problems yes yes i have two solutions what do i do by those two solutions okay how do i know that see these these are physical problems okay this is this is not like uh, so i want to do this problem and i just started doing it okay so these problems come from physical uh, phenomena okay this uh, generally burger's equation this equation here you will represent here you represents okay uh, i mean physically speaking you represent the height of the wave so basically this equation represents the wave motion okay the height of the wave of the wave do you understand what i'm saying to say the equation the phenomena here itself the burger's equation this actually uh, gives you the motion of some particular wave mo movement clear okay and this u the u that will represent the height of the wave at any point x at and at that time t right you are given the initial condition you have said that the height of the u at the initial condition t equals to the phi of x you have to find the solution so basically you have to find how the wave behaves so what is the height of the wave at a particular time and all okay so these are physical problems huh? and uh, you you want a unique solution so basically a real solution which is physically realistic solutions okay so uh, and uh, so this is the first one the second one okay we want a physically realistic solution realistic solution okay so to do now to get that physically realistic solution what do we should do is we introduce something called an entropy condition entropy condition okay okay so what is an entropy condition so let's say you are given this equation burger situation okay so given this equation ut plus f of u times x equals to 0 okay G given this equation now you see let's say f is given to be c1 for now huh? so that means this equation you can write it as ut plus f prime of u c1 of r huh? it is from r to r function if you remember okay u um, f prime of u ux equals to 0 that's the equation given to us now what are the characteristic curves the characteristic curves are given by x prime of rs is f f prime of z okay t prime of rs is uh, 1 here as z prime of rs is uh, what is it? Z prime of R is a 0, right? Okay. So, those are the things. Now, what does that give? From this thing, one can say that if you want to write it, uh, you see, dx by dt. What do you think dx by dt is? This is the speed of the solution, right? You see, characteristic curves is given by x, t and z. Z is fixed in the s direction, right? Okay. With respect to s. So basically, what is the speed of the solution or the speed of the curve that uh, the, the, the the wave essentially, okay, the speed of the wave that is essentially dx by dt, right, and that is given by here, from here you guys can see this is x prime of rs, so r is fixed here, right, so fixed for a fixed r here, r positive, so I have this. Now R positive or R in R, I, I mean, I, we are not really very interested in this thing. Some, some for some fixed R, huh? that's all. So essentially, this is X prime of S. So basically, this this can be written like this. No, uh, this is dx by ds, dt by ds. I hope this is fine. Okay. And what is dx by ds? This is F prime of S, F prime of uh, u. Okay. Uh, F prime of z. Sorry. Uh, anyway the u is z so that's that's fine and by one so basically this is given by dx by ds you can i can write it like f prime of u why i want to write it because I, I want to write it only in terms of x t and u that is why i just wrote it like this okay so therefore therefore the speed of the solution the speed of the solution and by solution i mean the speed of the wave okay 
solution u is given by f prime of u is this clear so in burger equation in the case of burger equation what is f prime of u it is u so the speed of the solution is given by u okay and what does that gives you that gives you so let's look at this equation uh, where the uh, yeah this equation see let's look at this equation see what this is saying is this that uh, here what is the speed of the solution dx by dt so, so the speed speed not not the speed of the curve huh? the speed of the solution u okay so speed of solution of solution u u is dx by dt right in our case what is dx by dt in this case example 2 let's say or uh, let's just do it for example 1 huh? from let's start from the very beginning example 1 okay so what is dx by dt in our case dx by dt is uh, you see this is z uh, z is u dx by dt is u right in our case okay now you see what this is saying is this uh, this says that the speed is proportional to and u, what does u represents u represents the height of the wave right so it says that the more the height the more the speed so you understand what i'm saying to you dx dt is u from here that is what we get dx dt is u what does that mean it means that the uh, the waves whose height are i mean taller right the, the, the bigger waves move faster than the smaller waves that, that's what it is saying right dx dt is u so the bigger u is the greater speed it has clear okay so uh, let's just put it like this one sec huh? let me write it like this so you see since in burger's equation equation dx by dt is u okay hence the bigger the wave the wave the faster it is of course it is yes dx dt is u okay so what does that means it means the initial wave okay the initial wave at t initial wave is at t equals to zero okay so initial wave is at t equals to zero so let us just uh, i mean again i have to draw one to so okay forgive my drawing again so this is uh, this is u one let's say okay and this is uh, x huh? t equals to zero here huh? so this is for t equals to zero i am taking a section you do realize that the graph lies in three dimension x t and the height u okay but in this case what is happening is i am just taking that section between t equals to zero basically the initial data okay uh, initial data in our case this, this is just the earlier case in this case okay so what is let's say u2 let's just say what is u2 u2 is up till here this is zero so i don't know how to draw that you guys realize what i'm trying to do here this is zero and here it is one u2 is one okay for x positive this is t equals to zero okay so this is for t equals to zero the initial line now that moves on as time moves what is happening as time moves on what happens to u2 u2 and t please understand this is u2 the height height huh? not the time variable see now what is happening is this it is saying u2 what is where is u2 i just drawn uh, u2 you see it is 1 for x greater than equal t 0 for x negative and between x and t it is x by 2 so basically for any time t so what is happening is uh, it is 1 t equals to 1 let's say so it is becoming 1 for x greater than equal t right so this is your x sorry this is not t this is x for x greater than equal t it is 1 and it is x by t up till here huh? between 0 and t this is x equals to t this line so this is for t equals to 1 and here it is 0 and after that for x negative it is going to be 0 so this is u2 huh? I, I am taking the example of this thing yeah? uh, second uh, problem exam uh, exercise 2 see u2 is this so I am just drawing that particular thing for two different things from t equals to 0 the curve I mean the wave moved from here to here is it fine at t equals to 0 the wave was like this you see it is 0 here uh, I don't know how to draw that but you do realize this is 0 here huh? 
and after that it is suddenly jumping becoming one that's the initial condition given to us so that's what it is said that the wave behaves like this now our solution which i which we just you know produced like like you know somebody gave us this like a blessing kind of thing think of it so after that the new u2 which we are getting at t equals to one how does it becomes at t equals to one it becomes like this you see it um, it is taking zero here it is taking x by t here and it is taking uh, one here here so that is what it is doing so essentially what is happening is this the uh, wave uh, okay uh, so the you see the wave when it is moving it is higher in the right right higher in the right and uh, so basically the that part of the wave on, on on the right that is moving faster you understand that is moving faster okay now physically actually this is not allowed we we don't want it to happen okay so what we want is this but it, it, you see if you look at the earlier problem uh, the first ex exercise uh, this 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 problem huh? this problem uh, this problem you see phi of x is 1 for x negative and 0 for x positive so if you draw the curve you can see that uh, the initial waves are taller in the left in the left they are taller so basically the speed is more okay and uh, on the right they are shorter right so as a result what happens is the the part of the wave on the left they overtake the part of the wave on the right i i hope this is fine okay see wave is moving wave is moving as time uh, moves okay so, uh, so let's just think about it see uh, wave is moving as time is moving so basically uh, if the speed is more the one on the left if the height of that is more so basically that moves on much faster so in exercise one in exercise one you can see that the speed of the wave the Mm, uh, the initial uh, data uh, initial wave basically initial waves because uh, negative axis it is one right if you remember positive axis it is zero so initial waves was taller on the left yes on the left so what does that mean it means that the speed the waves which are coming from the left the speed of those waves are moving much faster they are moving much faster uh, okay so that implies that those waves okay that implies the wave is moving faster faster okay uh, then the wave the wave on the right right side so the positive axis okay so now what is happening is as a result what is happening is um, the part of the wave on the left okay it will overtake the part on the uh, wave on the right okay you do you do understand what i'm trying to say see i mean if the, the speed in this part is faster okay this part is a little slower so after some time it will overtake uh, the waves on the right right and once it overtakes what is happening is this it actually causes the waves to break so they you know they i mean um, they fall on each other actually and what happens is and that causes the wave to break okay this is the you know the curve of discontinuity which we are talking about you understand what i'm trying to say okay um, i hope this is uh, i mean uh, clear huh? so since the wave on the left in our earlier example example one okay that is the left wave is moving faster than the right wave once it moves faster it will catch up after some time right once it catches up what is happening is it will actually you know uh, it's like a kind of uh, think of it as a fight okay so at, uh, a fight will inverse and that will actually break uh, cause the wave to break right it will break the wave will break now once it breaks what happens is the the curve where it breaks that curve of discontinuity is what we say that uh, the rankine higonite curve which we talked about okay so now physically speaking we want this thing to happen but not what is happening in this exercise in u2 in the earlier case in exercise one, uh, two this is not happening okay in exercise two this is not happening in exercise one it is happening okay so um, so basically no 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 sorry sorry what am i saying 
not u2 u2 it is happening huh? uh, u1 it is not happening so one sec yeah in u1 it is not happening you see uh, the waves are, is on the left is zero and the wave on the left is uh, so basically uh, on the right is one so basically uh, the speed is very slow in the left and the right speed is very fast so there are no common i mean curves of discontinuity right so we don't want this sort of solution we don't want this solution this is not physically relevant okay see uh, first thing first i really apologize for not putting all of this together this can be put together but uh, you do uh, i mean conservation law uh, deserves a uh, you know course of its own it's just one whatever i am putting it in like uh, you know three four hours this is just a one semester course okay so huge sort of uh, um, you know physical relevance and how all of this is coming is there i mean theory but the thing is it is not possible to do it right now for this course this is the minimum which we can do for this course so please bear with me here so physically speaking okay for our mathematical also you can think of we do will not uh, we do not want you want to exist okay you want should not be there so we want this thing to have but we want u2 to u2 is our correct solution here okay we want u2 to be here because you see whatever i just explained in exercise one also holds in u2 also okay so essentially what we want is let's write it like this so we want we want to allow for a curve of discontinuity continuity okay curve of discontinuity if the wave is moving to the left uh, i mean the if the wave moving from left from left is faster than the wave moving from right from right clear okay we want this so physically speaking what does that mean it means that we want this condition this this condition we will call it a entropy condition okay so entropy condition condition you guys know what sigma is so if x equals to z t uh, is the uh, curve of discontinuity curve of discontinuity then then uh, we want uh, a prime of u minus the speed of the for uh, i mean uh, the wave on the left that should be greater than sigma what is sigma it is i prime of t okay that should be greater than a prime of u plus okay so the speed on the left must be greater than the speed on the right please remember left is greater than right that is called the entropy condition this condition is called the entropy condition and the curve of discontinuity of discontinuity is called shock curve shock curve okay for a solution for a solution u if it satisfies the rankin huguenot condition so let me write it otherwise uh, here since i'm writing the definition i think it's better to write it huguenot condition condition okay rankin huguenot condition okay and the entropy condition okay so basically um, when will you call a curve of discontinuity as a shock curve given a solution u let's say if i'm asking you whether this is a shock curve or not okay what happens first of all it has to satisfy the rankin huguenot condition of course but it also has to satisfy the entropy uh, uh, condition okay so for an example let's say example in exercise 2 
in exercise 2 okay example 2 okay uh, so this is the example 3 let's say okay what is f prime at u minus so let's say u1 minus okay for u1 huh, the u1 solution let's see that if the solution u1 is a valid solution if it's the entropy solution okay so this uh, kind of solutions we will call this uh, kind of solutions as the entropy solution solutions which does this okay so uh, does this uh, i mean is it an acceptable solution uh, so let me put it this way solution if you if you have a problem like this let's say you have a gap which you are fanning the gap like that okay just whatever we did x by t kind of thing or if you have you know the crossing characteristic cross and you are drawing a curve of discontinuity and doing that rank in Higuinite thing and all if you do all of that the thing is this which solutions do you think are admissible solutions what we are trying to say are the admissible solutions are only those solutions which satisfy so basically you know there will be a curve of discontinuity okay whatever it is the curve of discontinuity that curve of discontinuity must satisfy the rankine huguenot condition along with the entropy condition here that and we call such a curve as a shock curve okay let's just and those are the solutions which are acceptable solutions please remember those are the physically acceptable solutions huh? other solutions are not acceptable so let's uh, see if in the our second example oh, where is the example example two if this uh, u1 which we are getting is acceptable or not huh? what is u minus is zero u1 plus is one right so a prime of u1 minus is u1 minus okay which is 0 and a prime mean of u1 plus is u1 plus which is going to be 1 okay and hence entropy condition is not satisfied condition is not satisfied satisfied clear so entropy condition is not satisfied hence what is happening so you see x equals to t by 2 that's a curve of discontinuity all right but it's not a shock curve okay so please remember in uh, examinations also if you are given that uh, if you are written that uh, i mean that, uh, what is the shock curve and all the definitions of shock curve and all of this won't be given to you it's just uh, assume that you guys already know what are shock curves and all okay so here why it is not a shock curve because the entropy because the entropy condition condition is violated clear it is not followed so hence it is a shock curve clear and moreover you see u2 which you are getting is a continuous function right you see u2 is a continuous function right this where is the u2 you see this is a continuous function and you can say that the, this satisfies the entropy condition and hence this is a physically relevant condition and an acceptable condition clear so with this we are going to end this part